welcome back to the channel guys um, today I am going to try to get a new sensor installed on the bike and I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on the sensors I run uh, what kind and uh, kind of what they monitor um, most of the sensors that are on the bike are OEM style sensors that are wired into the fuel tech like the uh, the coolant temp gear position throttle position and speed are all uh, factory Suzuki sensors that uh, give info to the fuel tech and the fuel tech is actually it's pretty slick how it works in that it can take that info and through some math it can kind of give me uh, clutch slip I can get rear wheel speed for traction control a um, couple couple different things going on but the uh, aftermarket sensors that I run are uh, for the air intake temp sensor I run a GM style because they are dirt cheap and you can get them anywhere and it seems to be the pretty popular sensor among the car guys and they're kind of the uh, the test mule I guess you could say for for me and what I kind of research and follow um, these sensors from low dollar are uh, extremely reasonably priced and their reputation is uh, it, it's really good um, you know how much the car guys abuse their stuff and how much data logging they do and I haven't heard a bad word about these sensors so uh, this isn't a free plug well, I guess it is a free plug but uh, it's not a sponsored kind of thing I'm doing here um, I just seriously like passing on info on good deals we don't need to go broke doing this stuff it's more you know it's expensive enough as it is so if I can find something cheap like this that I can pass on and we can all benefit from it, I'm going to do it. Um, like I said, they're uh, super reasonably priced. The uh, shock travel sensor that I got on the bike is actually, it's a, from Low Dollar Motorsports. And it was only about 110 bucks for their 4-inch travel sensor. Um, works perfect. I'll get a picture of that later, but... The new sensor I'm going to add is this fella right here. It's a infrared temperature sensor. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put one of my friends out of work. Uh, one of my track helpers. He doesn't have a job anymore. He's fired. And I'm, I'm letting him know right now through this video. Uh, seriously though, um, ever since I put the turbo and stuff on the bike, uh, I've really, really enjoyed the noises it makes during the burnout. And like an idiot, that likes having people watch them do burnouts. I've tended to uh, overheat the tire a few times, and that causes us to look like we got our thumbs in our butts on the starting line while we wait for the tire to cool off. Uh, we do have a system, even though we might not always look like we know what we're doing. Um, depending on track conditions and overall uh, weather conditions, air temp, that type of thing. Depending on what the track is, we'll have kind of some target um, tire temperatures we look for. Uh, we try to record as much of it as we can, but sometimes as races go on, you know how it gets. Things get hectic. People forget to record things or take note of stuff. It just happens. Um, like I said, whether or not we're good at what we do remains to be seen. But this is more or less just to keep me in check during the burnout. Uh, we get to the starting line. When I'm rolling up towards the beams, uh, I'll still get kind of a second tire temp check and uh, track temp check but as long as my guy is there and he can kind of flash me the numbers for whatever the track is that gives me an idea of where I need to be for a tire temp and uh, as the tire comes up the temp in the burnout it tends to gain a little bit of heat even rolling out of the burnout so I know that now I can stop short of say we're shooting for generic number uh, 150 degrees whatever uh, I'll stop the burnout roll out of the burnout at say 120 it'll still heat will still be kind of getting into the tire as I'm rolling up there then I don't gotta sit in the starting line and annoy everybody including the guy in the other lane but either way it's going on the bike I got room for more sensors in the fuel tech and because I'm glutton for punishment with technology and I struggle with everything I do but I have to learn this thing if I want to you know get faster and get better one man show here guys but the uh, instructions for this thing are pretty straightforward. Uh, I've already added other sensors into this uh, standalone, so scaling everything and setting them up, turning them on, 
or activating the output is uh, pretty easy. Uh, they want the sensor mounted at a 45 degree angle, aim the beam at the center of the tire. Sounds easy enough. I'll probably make a bracket somewhere off of the tire hugger area, maybe something off the swing arm, kind of behind the nitrous bottle bracket, somewhere in there. But I want to keep it out of harm's way from debris coming straight off the tire. So I'm almost thinking of maybe, if you could picture this being the tire hugger, maybe having it on the outside of the hugger, but through a hole towards the tire. We'll see, uh, we'll see what I come up with. Um, it's a four wire sensor. We got six to 24 volt DC for supply. Um, obviously the bike runs at somewhere between 12 to 14. Got my sensor ground, so that'll be my five volt ground. There's my five volt signal. And then the shielded cable chassis ground it says optional. Um, I tend to like to run that. That's this wire here. All this is is a fourth wire that is actually just spiral wound around, around um, the other three wires for the sensor. And it kind of just eliminates noise. So the readout for the sensor will be a little more consistent and hopefully a little smoother. The harness on this bike is not any kind of special motorsport spec concentric twisted uh, fancy harness. Um, it's a harness that I did myself out here that I feel is the simplest, cleanest option I had as far as being able to maintain and hunt down problems on the bike. Um, so far so good, I made it through a whole season with no issues, but um, it's not a uh, Formula One quality wiring harness on this thing. I am not a Formula One quality guy. I'm in a storage unit wearing a camouflage jacket. What do you want from me? But anyway, um, let's take a look at ideas and kind of try to come up with something for uh, for mounting this thing on the bike because then after we get it wired in or mounted up and wired in we're going to go into the software on this little fella and uh, show you how I scale it and set it up so that uh, it reads everything I need to read and then I can set up the dash and I'll put the little display on the dash to read my uh, tire temperature so let's go check that out problem Solution. Sensors mounted. All right, boys and squirrels. Uh, blue tape holding my sensor on would be pretty cool. And some of the stuff I've seen going down the track at the uh, local strip here, um, it might be even be normal. Uh, not my style, though. So we're going to go ahead and make a bracket to mount this here sensor on uh, the tire hugger. Now, this little piece of aluminum here, it's actually a leftover chunk of uh, old tiger tail I had on the bike years ago. Uh, I've gotten more use out of this by making brackets out of it than I ever got use out of it as a tiger tail. Um, bike just went through too many changes too fast for you know one part to stay on that long. So we're going to go ahead and get another nickel's worth of parts out of this thing by making a uh, temperature, a temperature sensor bracket for it. So we know this sensor is wider than an inch, not by a lot, but I need a hole to start with that's about 686 wide. So that's gonna be roughly 18 37ths. Luckily, I have that drill over there. So we're gonna start with my doodle-ins here. I already drew out roughly what the sensor's gonna look like. So my ruler, one inch wide, gave me my straight edge there. So then I need the hole, then we're going to have the first bend on each side is going to be right after the hole. So we'll have a flat. Then these legs are going to taper down to about a 3 8 inch wide uh, foot with a hole in it where it's going to mount to the hugger itself. Now the hugger has a radius to it, obviously, because there's a tire behind it. So it, the hugger has a radius. So if you're looking straight down, kind of like how you are now, if I had a 1 inch flat going across there with a bolt in it, I'd have a gap here and a gap over here. And that one inch wide bracket just wouldn't look right. That's why I'm going to have these feet taper down to just little uh, pads. So they'll, they'll uh, tighten down and look a little nicer against the hugger. So we can go ahead and uh, rough out what this is going to look like on cardboard, I think I'll start with first. Um, this aluminum I could was just doodling on it, kind of figuring out what I wanted to make. So let's make one out of uh, cardboard that we can actually put on the bike first before we start cutting aluminum. 
And just like that, we got a cardboard bracket made. Um, I actually had this when I started cutting this out with the scissors and kind of drawing everything with the marker. Um, I already had this over on the bike and figured out roughly what I wanted for dimensions on these legs. Um, you can see that there is two different lengths. Um, that I'll explain in a minute. It's going to help me get uh, a different angle with the sensor and mount it lower than what they would call for normally. So now that I know this, this actually is going to work, I'll, you know, I'll mock this up on the bike and you'll see what it'll look like roughly. You know, it'll go in there like so. You can run this nut down just to hold that cardboard in place. And then see if this kind of makes sense to you. So if you can picture those legs being different lengths. The cardboard doesn't really do it justice here, but one is a little longer than the other. So that actually helped the sensor cock off to one side like that. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this template out now on the aluminum. And that way, this you know these, these dimensions here are nothing. It's just a drawing. Um, these dimensions are closer to what I want. I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to shorten up the short leg just a little bit more. The uh, cardboard didn't really hold what I wanted to, to uh, have for a dimension on that. But this is kind of what's going on when I say I want different length legs on that bracket. Focus. There we go. Close enough. So where's my pen? There's my pointer over here. So if you can imagine the swing arm, you know, running straight through here. Then the tire where it passes behind the swing arm, we'll call that, you know, perpendicular to the arm, arm itself. So there's a 90 degree angle there that's roughly straight down the middle of the swing arm right to the tire in line with the axle so that's freaking right there so they want that sensor at 45 degrees and i'm pretty sure it's the only reason they want that 45 degree angle is uh to keep debris from directly peening that sensor right right in the wahoo so what i wanted to do is mount the sensor because if up at 45 degree angle here on the hugger you know things are tight back in the bike there's a radiator up in here there's a fuel pump up over here you know, I sit kind of up over here, but whatever. Um, what I wanted to do is mount that sensor lower, but the lower I get, the more it's kind of shooting straight at the tire. So by having those legs, different lengths, I have a short one here and a long one at the bottom, it allow me to move the sensor down and then still kind of cock the sensor to get 45 degrees to the surface it's going to hit. Um, that's all going to kind of change. Like I said, I think the 45 is just a guideline. Because as the tire moves back and forth, you can see the imaginary line here behind the hugger. So the hugger is, you know, it's fixed, obviously. So as the tire moves, you know, tire back here, because that slides forward and backward, that angle is going to change. Um, these aren't cars, obviously. Our, our wheelbase is not a fixed number. So I think, honestly, the 45, like I said, I think it's just a guideline for keeping debris from hitting that sensor head on. So I'd like to go with the same theory, though, with keeping it at an angle, having a hole in the hugger, and I would have to do a burnout in reverse to get that thing to sh shoot any crud up into that sensor. And if the tire's going this way, any crap that would happen to go through that hole would kind of go straight through and miss the sensor and hopefully fall at the bottom. So there's my description and theory behind what I'm doing. Uh, you can go ahead and tear me apart, but uh, I think it'll work all right for what I'm doing. So now... Let's get busy with some power tools and make a bracket out of some aluminum. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, angles and things, some lengths and numbers. Uh, there's a hole. Looks good. Well, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's some lengths, obviously they're different lengths. I got some angles here, uh, it is one inch wide. This, this is awful. I shouldn't be allowed to touch power tools. This got out of hand in a hurry. I don't know where I went wrong. This couldn't have been done worse if it was done by somebody in Illinois. But, uh, I, boy, yeah, let's... Let's just pretend that didn't happen. But this one did. Does that make sense to you now for my chicken scratching drawing on my legal pad? 
There's my uh, 1837's hole. I'll show you that drill bit later. It was a special order item. There's the different length legs. You can see now that they're a little more you know, extreme than what kind of came across in the cardboard. Um, you can imagine tire hugger, flat, let's flip the door so it's right, flat. That angle gets me even more, or those legs get me more angle than what it would be if it was actually on the hugger, you know, up at 45 degrees or down lower and turn more. Whatever. It'll work just fine. Uh, added some speed holes to it because uh, speed holes rule. The uh, There's a little chamfer on these holes, so uh, when I go to, I'll paint this black so it'll blend in a little better on the bike, just look nicer. Raw aluminum just kind of looks unfinished. Um, I'll go back and I'll hit those uh, those chamfers on those holes with a uh, little countersink tool again once it's painted. It'll knock the paint off that edge and leave a nice silver ring on each hole. Just a little contrast. I think it'll look pretty cool. So, that is a cheap, uh, free temp sensor bracket. I'm just going to keep flipping it around until somebody gets annoyed with it. But anyway, let's put it on the bike and then we can get ready to start doing some wiring. And God knows I love wiring. So now we're going to go ahead and mount the bracket on the uh, hugger. I went ahead and dug through my miscellaneous bolt bin and got some stainless button heads. Um, I got some titanium hardware on the way to mount this. Um, you might say, why titanium? Like, does it really make a difference? Uh, absolutely, probably does not make a difference, but it's freaking cool. So it's just one of those things that I like to do. It's a little bit extra. So we'll go ahead and just mount this up for now with uh, the uh, temporary stainless ones here. They'll still look alright while it's sitting here. But I just want to get it bolted up so I can start routing wires and uh, get this thing set up. Go ahead and buzz that down with my little uh, hazard fraud. My Harbor Freight electric screwdriver, which for 20 bucks works awesome. A little bit of torque to it too. That'll work. Now we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get started on wiring I think. And just like that Bob's your uncle. Got the bracket painted. Got my little uh, chamfers hit there with the uh, countersink tool to bring the silver back through the paint. And uh, that dog will hunt. Let's run it.